The Mormon question in the 2012 election, and particularly um, uh, front-runner Mitt Romney's challenge um, a- among a key group in the Republican primary, that is, white evangelical Protestant Christians. Um, so first of all, just a couple of uh, kind of big-picture numbers here to set the table. Um, it, we, we asked this question a couple times this year, and we found very consistent findings that two-thirds of Americans say uh, that it is important for a presidential candidate to have strong religious beliefs. Uh, so... Uh, despite the fact that the Constitution guarantees, you know, no religious test for office, uh, having strong religious beliefs in general is, a, is an attribute that uh, voters are looking for um, in a president. Uh, that number, if you look at white evangelical Protestants, they are off the charts on this number. It's, it's nearly unanimous. Ninety-three percent of white evangelical Protestant Christians uh, say that it's very that it's, uh, important for a presidential candidate uh, to have strong religious beliefs. African American Protestants, not far behind. Seven in ten Catholics. Uh, two-thirds of white mainline, uh, and even a third of religiously unaffiliated Americans say that it's important for uh, a a, a president to have strong religious beliefs. Um, And uh, one number here is that we had a follow-up question on this uh, where we said, okay, well, what if that candidate's beliefs are very different from your own? How does that affect it? Turns out that it does matter, right? It's not just any old religious beliefs, but religious beliefs that are somehow uh, uh, have some resonance with with their own. So 19% of voters, for example, say, well, even if a president had strong religious beliefs, but if those beliefs were very different from my own, uh, I would be less likely to vote for that candidate. Um, so that's uh, a, a finding. That number actually rises to 36% among white evangelical Protestant Christians. So there's one hint uh, of kind of the challenge that Romney may face uh, for white evangelical Protestant Christians. And we'll see a little bit more uh, why as we move forward. Uh, a couple of uh, questions that help us gauge how voters perceive the Mormon faith um, just uh, really, you know, not tied directly to the presidential context, but uh, the question about, uh, we had a controversy, um, Pastor Jefferts, uh, was an evangelical pastor out of, of Dallas, who, uh, you know, uh, kind of infamously uh, said that uh, Mormonism was a cult at one of the, at the Values Voters Conference, um, and that caused quite a stir. We saw it come back up again in some of the presidential debates. Um, it turns out that uh, only about a third of voters uh, think that uh, the Mormon faith is not a Christian religion. However, again, among white evangelical Protestant Christians, that number goes to nearly half, 49% who say that the Mormon faith is not a Christian religion. Um, On a a broader question about whether Mormons have religious beliefs that are very different or similar to uh, their own, uh, among all voters uh, say that Mormons have religious beliefs that are different from their own. That's uh, 66%. uh, And white evangelical voters um, are right there, really at the same. 68% of white evangelical voters say that Mormons have religious beliefs um, that are very different from their own. Now, why does this matter? Um, we did, if we run a, just a quick check on this number, um, for example, and we look at among voters who are familiar with Romney and who believe that Mormons have religious beliefs similar to their own, two-thirds of them have a favorable view of Romney. If we look at the, the flip side of that, voters who are familiar with Romney and who believe Mormons have religious beliefs different from their own, that number drops to four, the favorability number drops to 47%, right? So there's a, nearly a 20-point drag uh, on favorability linked to uh, uh, evaluations of whether the Mormon uh, faith uh, is similar or, or different from uh, from from their own. Um, so uh, another question we asked uh, to kind of just make sure we're getting a, a good read on this was a straight up question about whether people would be um, comfortable or uncomfortable with a Mormon serving as president. Uh, among all voters, four in ten say that would uh, either either be somewhat or very uncomfortable with a Mormon uh, serving as president. Um, we look in, down under religions. Um, we have uh, African American Protestants uh, at the highest, six and ten, uh, saying that they would be at least somewhat uncomfortable. White evangelicals, again, that number rises to almost half at 47 percent, saying they would be uh, somewhat uncomfortable uh, with a, a Mormon serving as president. Uh, we also see some interesting age differences that we could talk about later. Uh, the millennial generation, uh, the generation under 30, a majority, 54 percent, said they would be at least somewhat uncomfortable with a Mormon serving as president. If you look down at seniors, um, those age 65 or older, that's only 39 percent. So we see some really interesting generational differences. Uh, we could talk about those later. I'm going to actually end the presentation with some other generational differences uh, that I think will be we, kind of putting those together will be uh, uh, interesting for thinking about how uh, younger people and the general election, especially, uh, may shape uh, may shape uh, what's going on. Um, one thing we included in this survey um, was an, an interesting experiment um, that was designed to see whether people um, were telling us the truth, basically, about whether they had uh, discomfort with a Mormon becoming president. These are telephone surveys, so as you might imagine, 
people might have, uh, you know, we were theorizing that people might have some misgivings about telling a stranger over the telephone uh, that they had some discomfort with a Mormon uh, serving as president. So we included a way in the survey where they could tell us that indirectly without having to tell the interviewer uh, that uh, e exactly. And basically what we did is we set up a list experiment that it said, we had four statements and we said, tell us which of these, tell us how many of these, excuse me, tell us how many of these statements might make you uncomfortable, uh, but don't tell us which one. And we split the survey uh, sample in half. So half the sample only got three statements, half the sample got four, with the fourth being discomfort with a Mormon serving as president. And then we were able to see uh, people, uh, whether they were giving us kind of accurate direct measures uh, versus the indirect measure. The interesting thing about this is there was absolutely no difference uh, in the uh, indirect measures and the direct measures at the general population level. And that was true for virtually every demographic group we looked at, whether it's Democrats, Republicans, conservatives, moderates, liberals, um, white evangelical Protestants. The one group that sticks out here uh, is white even, uh, sorry, white mainline Protestants, uh, where uh, we had a direct measure of concern, only 3 in 10 indicated that they had some discomfort with the Mormon serving as president, uh, but 57% uh, 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 indicated indirectly uh, that, that this would be something that would bother them. Uh, so we can talk about that again a little bit later and kind of try to unpack that a little bit, but it's a very interesting finding that the white mainline Protestants are the one group that stick out here that uh, there's a, where there's a gap between a direct and indirect measure of discomfort with a Mormon becoming president. Um, uh, we have a couple of uh, time series things here. We were in the field in July um, and September and October uh, asking about knowledge of Romney's religion and favorability of Romney. Um, one very intriguing thing, if we look among, again, among white evangelical Protestant voters, um, uh, as a whole, astonishingly enough, um, most Americans uh, today continue to not know that Mitt Romney's religion is Mormon. Uh, so we asked this in July. It was only 4 in 10. We asked it again uh, in October. Um, it, the number had barely moved. There's no statistical difference here, 42% uh, still uh, only know. So this is despite, what, six debates, seven debates, uh, a controversy around the Values Voters Summit, uh, lots of press around this, and yet still only 4 in 10. Uh, know that uh, Romney's religion is Mormon. Uh, the one group that we looked at, and this is uh, virtually the only group for which this is true, where knowledge has gone up is among white evangelical Protestants. Their knowledge went from 44% uh, in July up to 53% in October. So that's a significant change among that group. Now, if you'll pay attention to this slide with the next one, you'll see, so this is July to October, knowledge of, about Romney's religion has gone up um, and Romney's favorability has gone down. Um, so, and, and, and this is actually over just the last months, from September to October. And in September, Romney's favorability among white evangelical voters was 63%. That number has dropped now uh, down to 49%. Uh, so we can't make a cause and effect kind of um, conclusion here, but these two things are, actually, are certainly happening at the same time. Knowledge of his religion is going up. Uh, uh, favorabilities going down. Uh, there's also the rise of Herman Cain in this, which kind of complicates the picture here in this in this, uh, in this this uh, scenario as well. That's certainly some effect too, but the, so there's kind of rise of Herman Cain, uh, rise in knowledge of Romney's uh, faith as Mormon, and drop in favorability among white evangelical Protestants all at the same time. Um, uh, one thing that I think may uh, provide a window into um, Herman Cain's rise, um, and you know we have uh, a press conference this afternoon, right, which may change this equation completely. But uh, but up up to now, um, uh, uh, one thing that may uh, essentially when we were in the field in September, uh, Herman Cain was pulling in single digit numbers, right? He was just nowhere on the on the radar screen, um, and we went back in the field in October, and what what we see here, and the picture you can see is if you look at Herman Cain, he's on the left. And we had a question about which candidate is uh, closest to your political views, which candidate is closest to your religious beliefs. Um, and if you look at these, this combination, what you see is that Herman Cain has really been able to take advantage of some weaknesses among Mitt Romney on the religious side and Rick Perry on the political side. Right. So Rick Perry is as strong as uh, Cain on religious uh, people saying that his religious beliefs are close to their own. Um, this is among evangelical voters, um, but only uh, almost like half as many say his political beliefs or, or political views are closest to their own. Among uh, Mitt Romney has the opposite problem, right? That 21% say uh, his political views uh, of, of the evangelical say his political views are closest to their own, but only 8%. Uh, say his religious beliefs are closest to their own. Herman Cain does his, you know, a little better than uh, Romney and uh, better than Romney on on politics, and he does better than Perry on religious affinity. And this is at least one part of the explanation, I think, among white evangelical voters for why he's been able to sort of move ahead because he's sort of 
gaining strength from uh, Romney's kind of religious weakness and gaining strength from Perry's political weakness, uh, particularly among white evangelical Protestant uh, voters, which are such a key group in the uh, Republican primaries.